people it's me Anya my pronouns all she and her and welcome back to my channel for a new recent weeds video the first book on this list is called Juniper Harvey in the Vanishing Kingdom this story is a middle grade urban fantasy that follows a young sapphic main character and it's a retelling of the Pygmalion which I had no familiarity with at all which made the plot completely unpredictable which was very very nice because I prefer reading retellings where I have no familiarity or little to no familiarity with the original story so that I'm not comparing the current story with the original if that makes any sense while I'm reading it. So anyway, the plot was very fast paced and very intriguing although the world building for me was more confusing than immersive because I personally prefer it when fantasy world building is shown more than told to me if that makes any sense so because of those two things i wasn't completely invested in the characters or the romance or the friendships or anything like that although i did appreciate the casual queer representation that was very very well done and we love to see it however with that said i read this book three out of five stars i won't be reading the sequel and honestly i wouldn't necessarily say that i was disappointed by this book because i haven't read a book by this author since 2019 when i read cryo's war and never read the sequel so yeah i don't really know if that makes any sense because there was nothing glaringly bad or problematic about this book it just wasn't for me personally so anyway overall i rated this book three stars and take that as you will the next book on this list is called always the almost this story is a YA contemporary following a young transgender boy who makes a New Year's resolution to win regionals and win back his ex, but a new boy might complicate things for him. This story is absolutely so fantastic, so excellent, and absolutely so brilliant, and it deserves all the type and so much more. First of all, the plot was so intriguing and absolutely so engaging. The friendships were so authentic because they were built on real connection and real chemistry because the characters were so well developed and so distinct. The romance was so cute and so adorable. Although I will say in the second half of the story, the romance went in a completely different direction than I was expecting, but I was still on board because I loved the romance so much. It was literally so well done. The queer representation was so great and so awesome. The family dynamics were so great. I also enjoyed all of the piano musical elements, especially as somebody who used to play piano myself. You know what I mean? Anyway, this entire book was so good and absolutely so awesome. And like I said before, it deserves all the type and so much more. So with that said, I rated this book four out of five stars and I really, really enjoyed it. So with that said, I would highly, highly recommend it. The next book on this list is called And Other Mistakes. This story is a YA contemporary following a young black sapphic main character as she is navigating false love, broken friendships, and family tension. I rated this book 3 out of 5 stars because first of all, here's the thing. I like reading messy teenage coming of age stories. It's just that I need to be prepared for the mess before I dive into it. You know what I mean? So that it's not an unpleasant surprise. There was nothing problematic or glaringly bad about this book necessarily. Like the plot was intriguing and engaging. Like the messy romantic and platonic dynamics made sense. The characters were well developed and distinct. The sapphic representation was wonderful and lovely. But overall for me at some points during the novel, I felt like there were too many storylines competing for the center of the story if that makes any sense i don't know if it does but like overall i did like this book but i didn't completely fall in love with it because sometimes there was just too much going on i don't know if that makes any sense at all and also please remember to check the content trigger warnings on goodreads or wherever else you might find them before you're going into this book which i definitely should have done but anyway that's on me my bad Overall, I enjoyed this book. I liked it, but I didn't completely love it. So overall, I rated it 3 out of 5 stars and take that as you will. The next book on this list is called The Love Match. This story is another YA contemporary following a young Bangladeshi American main character whose mother arranges a match to secure their family's financial status, except that the main character is falling for somebody else. And this story is marketed as Pride and Prejudice, meets to all the boys I've loved before, which I definitely understand and it's definitely pretty accurate 
and it also it lines up with my enjoyment of the story because I rated this book three out of five stars. The first half of this book was solid. I was on board with the romance, I liked the friendships, I liked the family dynamics, I liked the characters and the plot was pretty intriguing. However, in the second half, as certain characters' motivations started to unravel, they became more wishy-washy than anything else. I don't know if that makes any sense because I can't spoil the book for you. I mean, I could, but I always keep my reviews spoiler-free, so I'm not going to. So basically, overall, I didn't like the ending of this book as much as I really wanted to with the direction that the romance in particular went. So basically, with that said, I rated this book 3 out of 5 stars. I apologize in advance for this rather vague review, but overall, I didn't completely love this book as much as I really wanted to, so take that as you will. The next book on this list is called Chill Up, Love and Pom Poms. This story is a YA contemporary graphic novel and follows two main characters. One of them is an antisocial lesbian who joins a cheerleading team to better her social skills, and the other one is a half Latinx, half white, transgender main character who is the captain of said cheerleading team, and the two of them also used to be friends, and maybe through this team, they'll become something more. This story is absolutely so fantastic and it's so well done. First of all, the queer representation was so authentic and so well done. The plot was so intriguing and so engaging. The characters were so well developed and so distinct, and I love the platonic dynamics so much, as well as their romantic dynamic, because their romance was so cute and absolutely so well done. The illustrations were so pretty and made the story so much more immersive than it already was. You know what I mean? This book is absolutely so fantastic and so great and it's really, really awesome. So anyway, all that to say, I rated this book four to five stars because I clearly, really, really enjoyed it. With all that said, I would highly, highly recommend it. The last book on this list, and certainly not the least, is called Pailu of the Woods, which I hope I pronounced correctly, but if I didn't, please correct me in the comments section below. And this book is a middle grade graphic novel following a young girl who meets a forest spirit who forces her to confront her past and her complex emotions. This story is absolutely so fantastic and it's so well done. I rated this book four to five stars because I genuinely really, really enjoyed it. First of all, the illustrations were so stunning and absolutely so beautiful. The plot was so engaging and so intriguing. The characters were so well developed and so distinct and their friendship was absolutely so magical and so wonderful. All of the different family dynamics felt so authentic and so well done. This book is so amazing and it's so awesome. And I loved the conversations surrounding grief and loss and love and those complex emotions. You know what I mean? This book is so good. I really, really enjoyed it. I think this also has another graphic novel planned for next to you, and I will gladly read it because this book was absolutely so good, and I was so emotionally invested in the events as well as to the characters. So anyway, all that to say, I rated this book four to five stars because I really, really enjoyed it, and with that said, I would highly, highly recommend it. So in conclusion, I hope that you enjoy this video, and if you did, please don't hesitate to give it a big thumbs up. Comment down below the coffee emoji if you made it all the way to the end of the video. Thanks for watching, subscribe to my channel if you're new, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!